Today is a awesome day for me. Um, gosh, of all the places we filmed, this is one that has been on my bucket list for years and years and years. Ed, where are we today? We are at Marshall Gold Discovery State Historic Park in Coloma, California. For people who do not know where Coloma is on a map, how would you just how would you tell them to get here? Well, we're on Highway 49 between Placerville and Auburn, California. Why is this area so important to our California history? Because James Marshall was building a sawmill uh, with his partner John Sutter at, at this site, and Marshall accidentally discovered gold. Accidentally. Accidentally discovered gold. And and what happened after his accidental discovery? <laughs> The greatest mass migration of human beings ever descended on California. How big is the park? It's about 800 acres. Okay, wow. So we just took that bridge that's behind us, mm -hmm. we walked over to this area, and uh, why are we over in this area? Well, this is the area that you can gold pan in. So if you have your gold pan and you come to the park, you can come down here and look for gold. If you don't have a pan, we sell them in our store. Sure. Uh, also, if you've never panned for gold and you want to learn how, we teach gold panning here at the park. Gold is extremely dense. It has a specific gravity of 19.3. Most of the dirt and rock that we're standing on here is silica-based material. Silica has a specific gravity of 2.8. Water has a specific gravity of 1. In fact, specific gravity is based on the weight and volume of water. So when you get a bunch of uh, dirt in your pan, you want to agitate it. Mm -hmm with water in there to lubricate it. Okay. And as you agitate it, the gold is going to work its way to the bottom of the pan because it's six times heavier than the dirt and rock in that pan. So now you get more water in your pan and tilt the pan. Okay, now just stop. All right, there, there you go. go. This place didn't have a lot of gold in it okay. because, because the river is straight here and gold doesn't uh, fall out of the current in straight sections. It falls out in the bends of the river. And so it will, the, the uh, river will form a sandbar. A lot of these uh, original gold mining towns were called things like Rattlesnake Bar and Bidwell's Bar and Michigan Bar. And of course, when the gold was gone, the town was gone too. There's no reason to be there if there's no gold there. Coloma though, stayed. It, it became a little town and mainly because we had a bridge across the river. So you said this bridge is how old? This one's 103 years old. I think it was built in 1915. Wow, and prior to that, they had a bridge? Yes, there was a series of bridges. And then for a while, uh, back in the 1880s, um, the, the big bridge got swept away and they had a foot bridge across there. This is an exact replica of the sawmill that James Marshall was building when he discovered gold. Wow. So he and, and John Sutter formed a partnership to build this. Before that, Marshall worked for Sutter, but this was actually a partnership. And the way it went was Sutter would supply the, the uh, workmen and he would supply all the metal parts required for this. Marshall will supply the plans and he'll oversee the construction. How long from the time he and uh, John Sutter formed that partnership, you know, James Marshall starts working to the time he actually discovers gold? But how much time went by? Four months. Four months? Yeah. So we're talking September, October, year uh, 1847. Yeah. And then January, January. 24th, mm -hmm. that fateful day here in yep. California. Yep. They had tried the, to operate the sawmill. Okay, they got it to the point where uh, all the mechanical parts are in place and they wanted to see if it was actually going to run or not. Yeah. And so they opened up the floodgates and allowed the water to come rushing through. The water pushes against the bottom of the flutter wheel. Okay. And that's the motive power. Over here on the left side, you can see there's a pitman arm. It's a metal arm that comes out like this. Yes. And as the wheel turns, that pitman arm moves with it. Right. There's a board attached to the pitman arm, and if you follow it with your eye, it goes up and attaches to the bottom of the blade. Gotcha. So what we're doing here is we're changing rotary motion to linear motion. It's a linear ah, saw blade. Oh, okay. Right? And it's just gonna cut the yep. wood as the water goes underneath That's it. That's correct. And awesome. there's a carriage assembly which is which is geared into this that actually moves the log the log forward. So this is an automatic saw. Okay. So they didn't have a roof on it yet, but they wanted to see if it was actually going to run or not. Yeah. So they opened up the gates, allowed the water to come rushing through. The wheel was turning, it was cutting wood. In fact, it was cutting really nice straight wood. They were really impressed. Yeah. 
But then someone noticed that water is backing up in the tail race, that portion of the ditch that took the water back to the river. Now, Marshall would get up before the workmen every, every day and go out and, and check out the job site. Yeah. He needed to tell them what to do. And the morning of January 24th, 1848, he's standing down there in about three inches of water on a high spot, looking down into the water. He reaches down and picks it up. This is $6.50. Oh my, back then. Back then. Back then. Today, this is about $350 worth of gold. Yeah. And then he looks down at his feet and he sees all of these golden particles all around him. He takes his hat off, caves the top of it in, and starts picking them up and throwing them in the top of his hat. In a half hour's time, he had picked up $15 worth of gold. The discovery, which was documented. Yes. Right here. Yes became responsible for what again in California? The greatest mass migration of human beings ever up until that time. So we estimate the population of the whole state of California at between eight and 14,000 people in 1848. In 1848. In 1849, we estimate 90,000 people showed up here. The next year, another 90,000, and that would be 1850, and we became a state. You had to have 60,000 people in a territory to petition the government for statehood. We had that, yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem no in problem. a very short period of time. That's right. With all these people coming out here to California to get rich finding gold, approximately how many people became rich finding gold? Drum roll, please. About 5%. And how did those 5% become rich? Well, a lot of them were merchants, but a lot of them just found big pockets of gold and kept it. Those rocks, there's like, looks like a monument up top. Uh, those rocks, um, that's a, a bedrock mortar. We had a, a Native American village site right at the base of that rock. Uh, and that village was active at the time that James Marshall discovered gold. And so if you go up on top of the rock, and there's a trail up there, yeah. you'll see all these bedrock mortar holes where the women prepared food. What's this building right here? Well, that, was, uh, that building and the one on the far side of it were built by an American contractor, and they were leased out to Chinese merchants. And this one is the Wahop store and bank, and the other one is the Manly hardware store. All of this material in here is from one Chinese store from Newcastle, California. What are some of the items that are in this uh, store here? Well, we've got herbs and spices in those drawers over there. Okay. Uh, there's wine bottles along that wall. You could come in here and write a letter. There's a desk over here with all the writing utensils. Yeah, yeah. And your letter would get home because these people had the infrastructure that they brought from China. They brought it with them. Sure. So you could buy a meal in here. Uh, they have a butcher shop, um, just a general merchandise store. So yeah, this is a stamp mill. And the bottom line is they find gold in the river, yeah. then they find the hard rock gold up in the mountains. Yeah. They've got to crush it and they, to, to uh, separate the quartz from the gold. And that's how, this is, this is a machine that does that. This one is actually from Coloma, but we don't have any hard rock gold here. Okay. The hard rock gold is on the other side of Mount Murphy there in a band called Mariposa Slate. And the slate has been invaded by veins of quartz, and that quartz contains the gold. This is so cool because you have so many different things for people to come out here and actually see, including hydraulic mining? Yeah, like that's a monitor. Uh, that's uh, that's for, used for blasting the side of, a, of an ancient riverbed. These things worked under tremendous amounts of water pressure. Okay. So much water pressure that if you went like this, your arm would be off. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes sense. It's having to cut through. Yeah, this, this thing's gonna shoot a stream of water out here 200 feet or so. It's incredible because it started off as panning, and then, like you said, moved to, to rockers, rockers and shakers mm -hmm. and cradles and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, the, and it goes from one man to two men, to maybe four men, and then you get corporations involved. Gotcha. Yeah. What's in this building right here? Oh, uh, this is just a miner's cabin. Okay. Um, it's a it's a uh, log cabin, and um, it just represents what a cabin would look like inside. No. And these these men, there would be several men living here together. They'd be sleeping most likely in the same bed. That was very common, just for warmth. Okay. Um, 
it's just a rudimentary cabin. This is actually a good one because it's got a wood floor. Most of them were dirt floors. Were they common? I mean, like for a hundred miners, how many cabins would be in an area? Well, maybe 20 cabins. 20 cabins, yeah. okay. And a lot of them would be partial cabins. So that you might have wood walls and a canvas roof, okay. that sort of thing. Obviously you have these trails which are taking you around and you get to, to see all these different buildings. You have a museum. What can people see in the museum? Well, we have all new displays in the back room of the museum. It's been closed for five years. The back room's been closed for five years. Yeah. And so we've got a lot of stuff back there. Some of it is interactive. We also have a working blacksmith shop down the street on uh, down this way. Is the blacksmith in town? It is, and, and they uh, it's open every day. It is open every day. Let's go check that out. Why is it important for a town to have a blacksmith? Well, they repaired things. Uh, if your wagon broke, uh, they could repair the metal parts of it. Uh, if your horse needed chewing, they did that too. So uh, they were an integral part of the uh, community. So at the time where James Marshall discovered gold, were there uh, a black, was there a blacksmith in town? Were there a couple in No, town? but James Marshall was a wagon right. He was actually a blacksmith and a carpenter. And one of the big problems with, with the mill was the metal parts required blacksmithing. The only blacksmith around was down at Sutter's Ford. And so Marshall had to spend quite a bit of time down there uh, working with the blacksmith to make all these metal parts for the, for the sawmill. Where are we right now? We're at the monument. We're at the top of the hill, and this is where James Marshall is buried. What happened to James Marshall after that discovery of gold? Well, he went looking for gold himself. First of all, the, the sawmill was a failure after a couple of years. Uh, it's a fixed asset, so if the water in the river was too high, they couldn't run it. It was too low, they couldn't run it. And they got run out of business by people that brought portable, steam-powered sawmills to California. So after the business failure, he went looking for gold. Eventually, he wanders back into Coloma here, and he's a wreck. He's skinny, he hasn't been eaten right, his clothes are all tattered. So finally he moves over to Kelsey, this little town on the other side of Mount Murphy behind us. And there he had a little hotel that he owned, it was a ramshackle place, and he had a gold mine. And he had a partner in this gold mine. And the state of California at that point had given him a pension, a good pension, of $200 a month. Then the legislature changes, he has no friends in the legislature, his pension is gone. He finds himself destitute up in uh, Kelsey. He has to sell the mine in 1885. He's helping a friend with some pretty heavy labor and he gets, starts feeling bad. And so he goes back to, back to his uh, hotel room and lays down. Is he pointing at something in particular right there? Yeah, he's pointing to the, that point where he found gold. Wow, and that's mm -hmm. strategic, I assume, yes. right? That, the mm -hmm. way that's placed. And with that, thank you so much, Ed. I really appreciate it. Wow, my pleasure.